all Congolese want peace. We want peace. As of 2018, more than 5 million people have fled the Congo, according to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Since 1996, Congo has been invaded by the neighboring countries of Rwanda and Uganda. Uh, first, it was to tap Mobutu from power. And secondly, in 1998, the Second War, which is called the First African World War, was to just come and loot the mineral, the vast mineral-rich resources of Congo. And since then, the war has been, the crisis has been going on until today. Jack Mushagasha is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He says the constant violence in the DRC continues to force people out of the country. He wanted an opportunity to explain what he says is the truth about who is actually fighting in the DRC. Basically, international media says that it's a civil war, but we Congolese know that it's a, an invasion from Rwanda. So the Rwandan troops and the Ugandan troops came in Congo to support some proxies uh, forces to fight against the government. As of now, the statistics shows that there are more than 8 million people in Congo who have been killed since 1998. Reportedly, EMU graduate Michael Sharp and a colleague were killed while working for the United Nations in Kasai. Michael Sharp and uh, Zaida Catalan were supposed to go investigate because they had already found eight mass graves in that region. So at the time when they killed Michael Sharp, there were already 17 mass graves. Pe people, the villagers don't have equipment to make mass graves. To make a mass graves where you find 80 people, 100 people, it has to be a company with big equipment to dig the, the, the holes, put people inside and cover it. The reason why the problem of Kasai is on my heart is because it brings a comparison with what happened in, the, in 19... Or two. During that period, King Leopold II was the king. Was the sole property? Uh, Congo was its sole property. There was an African American missionary, the first one, the Presbyter a Presbyterian called William Henry Shepard. He was born in Wensboro. He also went to Congo as a missionary. But he, he denounced what, what King Leopold was doing there. And during that period, when King Leopold was the chief of Congo, which means 1885 to 1908, 10 million Congolese were killed. To me, I, I usually make a parallelism between what William Shepard did and what Michael J. Sharp did. Because Michael J. Sharp also, if he was alive, his report could show us exactly the atrocities and who committed them in Kasai the same way William Shepard did in 19, uh, 1902. He pointed out Rwanda and Uganda invaded the Congo, forcing the Congolese out of the DRC. He blames large corporations of stripping the Congo of its natural wealth of resources, including gold, diamond, copper, cobalt, coltan, tin, uranium, iron, magnesium, and other minerals. We know that it's all about the minerals. This mineral called coltan and cobalt, those are two essential minerals now in the world, and Congo has 60% of the world reserve of coltan, and I believe 50 to 70% of the world reserve of cobalt. Without coltan, you don't have cell phone. So coltan is a very important mineral in the manufacturing of cell phone and uh, or electronics. Cobalt is the essential mineral in the manufacturing of the 
electric batteries for our electric cars now. So you can understand how important those minerals are. The corporations are going there. They want to get them cheaper for free. And that's what is feeling the crisis. They want the crisis to continue so that they can get it cheaper. But for us Congolese, we want peace so that we can collaborate with them right, to get those minerals in an open way. He says the Congolese people have never benefited from the natural resources found in their country. In fact, most of them live in abject poverty. The president of Congo is getting big money from these sellings, but not the people of Congo. Because the report of the UN Index of Development shows that Congo is the seventh poorest country in the world. Yet, based on all those minerals and uh, resources, natural resources, Congo should be the second richest country in the world. He blames large corporations for reaping financial gain from the ongoing conflict in the DRC. We have Apple. Recently, Apple went back to discuss with the mineral companies to make sure that they continue getting their supply of cobalt. <laughs> we have Sony. We have Nokia. Nokia today is... Uh, is a part of Microsoft. Those are American things, uh, companies. And you believe they all know about these mass graves? Oh, yes, they do. They do. And the reason why I say they do, it's because one of our big billionaire here was once, last year or the, the year before last year, was interviewed about this. He he did not respond, obviously, but people, uh, journalists, investigators, journalists went to him because they had found some clues about what is going on in, in Congo and his company. Who's the billionaire? Bill Gates. In Harrisonburg, Elaine Rackley for Breaking Through News.